his name is Loop. My name is Pearl. We're turning yarn to things, making stuff with strings. You are here. We are here too. This is the Loop and Pearl Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a bead cleanup and then, uh, hey everybody! Hi! Oh my god. <sighs> okay, well, hello! Welcome to the podcast. What podcast? This is the Loop and Pearl podcast. Oh, Didn't you hear the good. song? Yeah, I did. I'm just making sure I'm in the right podcast. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I remember last night you, we had to call you over from the other podcast and it was like a whole it thing. It was a whole thing. Yeah, it was like legal issues and like yeah. Yeah, trademark stuff. Who are you? I'm... Loop, but you can call me Louie. And I'm Pearl, but you can call me Jules. Getting it right. We did it. <laughs> this is the Loop and Pearl podcast, a podcast about knitting and crocheting and yarn and things that we make with yarn and also mm. us and our cats. And beads cats. that fall out of eggs. Beads that fly music. everywhere. And uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope you liked our intro song. That was all Jules and uh, me making a mess. Yeah, it was great. Oh. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And there's our there's Jimbo's. our co-host Jimbo. Come here, Jimbo. Come on up. You want to say, say hi? hi. He's Come on up. striking. Here he uh, comes. He's striking. He's saying no. Oh, no. He's thinking no, about thank it. You. He'll you'll you'll see him eventually, probably any second now. So uh, <laughs> so. What month are we in? We are currently in April. Yeah. Uh, we I think we might have missed March. No, we we recorded an episode of February, which we released late in March, so it was kind of out of date by the time it came out. Yeah. But now we're doing an April one. It's going to come out only a few days after we record, yeah. and I'm very excited to get back on a schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like every time we're like, oh, shoot, we did, we goofed up again. But you know what? We're still making episodes, so what are you going to do about it? Thank you for being patient with us as we figure out yeah. our lives while simultaneously doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what do you think about our nice little setup here? I'm I'm pretty proud of it. I'm yeah, not I remember lie. when the bookshelf fell and then we had an episode on the couch because our living room was a disaster? Well... <laughs> Now our living room is more put together. We have kind of cleaned it up a little bit. We huh? have our books in rainbow order, classic. And flowers and things. We've got our IKEA bins to hide stuff. Yeah. We got our little knitting uh, swatches. Wallace swatches Ooh, lives on. Yeah. yeah. We got like cr some crocheted flowers, which we'll show more of later. Yeah. In Louis segment. So yeah, we have our living room back together, which is nice to have something go right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of flowers, perfect transition. What? Is your favorite flower, Jules? Ooh. What's your favorite flower? I think I. You want to guess? Because no. I don't have one answer. I like a lot of flowers. Yeah, I actually don't. Know. You know my favorite flower because I told you. I think just a few days ago. I hope you remember. Yeah, I can't remember the full name, but oh yes, yes, I remember. Should I go first? Yeah. It's Snapdragon. It's a Snapdragon. Yeah, I they love look Snapdragons. Like little mouths, and he says he likes to squish them. Yeah, you can like puppet them. You can like pu push the corners of them and then they go. Arr, arr, arr. See, you just like puppets. You yeah. just found a flower that is a puppet. Yeah. And that's your favorite. But they're also real pretty and they come in cute little colors. They do. I like snapdragons. Including purple. Did you know that? Yeah, I did know that. Yeah, my mom had purple ones. Uh, and Jules's favorite flower is... Oh, actually, I think it's a sunflower, isn't it? No. Is it a tulip? No. Is it a rose? It is a rose. Oh, it's a rose, of course. I'm so stereotypical. Yes. No, I, I really, I love how they smell. They come in every color. We got yellow roses up there. Oh, yeah, I brought her these ones. Uh, They're a little old now, but I love them anyway. Yeah, I brought them from my my friend's uh, house. They have huge, beautiful rose uh, bushes mm -hmm. in the front. And I was like, hey, I'm going to steal a couple of these for jewels. And yeah. they, it worked out perfect. So and they, nice. They like blossomed the next day. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I love roses. Uh, I I associate them with celebrations. Um, whenever I would have an opening night of a show, you get a rose. Yeah. Like that. So that smell just brings joy to me. Like, yeah. And kind of success in a weird way. Like you achieved something. Yeah. Roses are hard to grow too, so that kind of aligns. Yeah, there's kind of like a challenge to them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like roses? I, I think 
Everybody likes rose. What color rose? Yellow? Is I do like yellow. Um, these ones are really nice. You can't really tell on the camera, but the tips are pink. So yeah. I like I like multicolored roses. White Maybe. roses are beautiful too. Um, but all of them are great. Every every rose every rose has its thorn. That's also true. Don't That's mess true. with the rose. Don't mess with the roses. Poke you. Uh, yeah, so those are our, what are your favorite roses? Let us know in the comments. Roses? What are your favorite flowers? Yeah, or roses, but flowers. Or snapdragons. Or snapdragons. Are your favorite flower, is your favorite flower also a snapdragon? Oh it my should gosh, be. what a copycat. <laughs> Think of something original, <laughs> says the girl who I'll said try. roses. I'll try, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like snapdragon is like a pretty original yeah. flower to have yeah. as your favorite. I'm pretty proud of it. No, that. I'm saying they're copying you. Oh, got it. I see. Yeah. Stop copying me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're so Stop mad. copying me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, well, what have we been doing in our absence of a month or so? Let's see. We did, uh, oh, we did Stitches West. Mm -hmm. That was last month, early last month. That yep. was a First a weekend big, of March. Yeah. First weekend of March. It was a big event. It feels like it was even further away. I know. To be honest. But yeah. Uh, so for those who don't know, it's an annual yarn conference that happens in California, Stitches West, but there's also Stitches East, Stitches South, there's a Midwest, there's now an LA, but I think they're calling it Stitches SoCal. SoCal, yeah. So, um, we're going to be there, by the way, November, November. if you want to come say hi. Uh, mm -hmm. November in Southern California, I'm not sure exactly where, but if you look up Stitches... SoCal. SoCal, you'll find it. Yeah. Uh, this year, Stitches West was in Sacramento for the first time, and it was lovely. It uh, was. Not only did we get to see our friends who live up there, my brother lives up there, and he just had his baby. Yeah, like the so day we came. It, no, no, like a week before. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. She was a week old. Time. Um, so it was so nice to, to meet, meet the little baby. She's so cute. She looks like a little elf, and she's adorable, and I love her. Her name is Sophie, and she's great. He's so cute. I haven't been able to meet her yet, but I'm. <laughs> but I, you love her. But already. I love her. Well, every picture, she's so cute. She looks like a little, a little elf person. <laughs> she's so cute. There's not. It's not every day that I find a newborn baby very cute. But it's true. I, I absolutely find this newborn baby very cute. The shape's insane. So little. So yeah, uh, and Stitches West went off. I think really well. Yeah. Everybody was well behaved. They totally. wore their masks. They were yeah. responsible. Um, it was a smaller event this year. I think a combination of COVID and the move to Sacramento. It used to be in Santa Clara. Yeah. So in the South Bay. Um, so we lost a few vendors because of those things. But I think the the event's just going to grow over time with yeah. COVID becoming more manageable, hopefully, in the future. Yeah. And people just being more comfortable being around others. Yeah, it was... It was it, I think... Personally, I could have done a little bit better as as far as the booth because it was like my first time doing it. But booth for thing. a first time, you did awesome. But yeah, it was it went pretty pretty well. Um, a few people actually came by to say hi. So hello to those of you out there that actually came you know by who and you say are. hi. Yes, you know who you are. <laughs> um, someone yes. actually bought brought me a crochet gift to and to say hi. And Should stuff. we go grab it? Do you want me to go grab it? Sure. Yeah, go grab it real quick. Poof! Magic! Look at that. Isn't that amazing? This is a gift from Jasmine. She came by the booth and gave me a little crocheted thing. Just a just one example of the many people that came by and said hi. I got a few other gifts uh, from people too, and it's just it meant a lot. Thank you so much for coming by and saying hi. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to say hi to me in SoCal, I think it's in November. It is in November. You should come. It'll I'll be, be cool. I'll be there too. I, I was helping out with the club crochet booth for most of the weekend. Until my feet hurt too much. Yeah. Or if I wanted to go shopping, I would just run around and say hi to also the local yarn store owners. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was very tiring, but it was really Oh my cool. God. It took us a week to recover. Yeah, at, at least. least. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you again, Jasmine. This is very sweet. Okay. Well, without further ado, let's get into the main bits of our podcast. What is this dance? I'm doing magic. I'm trying to get us into the knitter's nook. We've, I need to teleport us. Oh, yeah. Oh, do I? Need you to... haven't. Have you not been doing this every episode? No. Knitter's oh nook. I can't handle it. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so in this knitter's nook, I don't have any new designs for you. Uh, last episode, I had two. So let's just call it even. Uh, <laughs> Seems fair. It might be a few months, honestly, until my next design. And that's okay. I have other things I'm working on, and I'm working on future designs. It's just taking a little longer than normal. 
normal. I think yeah. it's fine. I'm not going to rush myself. Yeah, and you've been doing tests and, and also... Also, what about your wrist? Oh, yeah. Can we talk about that, too? I kind of might have hurt my wrist. I should be wearing my brace right now. Mm. Uh, I started getting little tingles in my fingers, in the back of my hand Tingles here. in your fingers. And my wrist does feel, like, achy. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure what's going on is carpal tunnel stuff. I haven't gone to the doctor yet because I don't want to know. Yeah. Uh, so I've just that. been not knitting for a few days, then knitting a little bit, and then if it hurts, stopping. I've been wearing my brace when I'm not, like, washing the dishes and stuff, um, and that's been helping, and I've been doing stretches a lot, just trying not to um, do this with that wrist and trying not to grip too hard with, yeah. that, with that hand. So, I mean, it was bound to happen eventually, especially once you knit too much, you know? Uh, there are ways to prevent it. it yeah. you sh I don't stretch enough, and this is what's happened now. So... If you are a knitter or a crocheter, please remember to take a break every 15 or so minutes and just do a quick stretch and then get right back in. Yeah. Stretch your little fingers. Stretch them fingers. Just do your hands like this. Maybe do some thumb circles. Maybe, Don't crack your knuckles as much as I do. No. Maybe just gently roll your wrists like this. It's just something to... Yeah. So they're not, you know, gripping like little... Yeah, little yeah, demon little, hands. Yeah, little demon, <laughs> little demon Anyway, hands. so that's also slowed me down quite yeah. a bit. Not trying to make excuses here, but... It, it I mean, it's it the is. truth. It's a fact. So, uh, you were talking about tests a second ago. Uh, what I'm going to show, I'm going to skip latest designs and go straight to FOs, finished yeah. objects. And I did a test knit for a fellow designer, Karina Spencer. She's very cool. She's very hip. She is also... Uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> She's also a really good seamstress. So not only does she design knitwear, but she uh, designs um, clothing uh, that you sew. Sewing, well, sewing patterns. Yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. Two different, like, uh, yeah. Mediums. Two yeah. different mediums. Yeah. I don't know if she crochets, though. Her uh, garments tend to be, like, layering pieces. So this is the latest one that I did for her. It's a cropped sweater. So you see it's pretty darn short when that it's really up cool on, on me. Camera. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I'm going to lie it down on the table. This is called the mid-season sweater, or maybe pullover. I'm not sure which, which word she used. Um, and the point of it being called the mid-season sweater is that you can wear it between seasons, between winter and spring. And that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've been layering this over dresses. It works really nicely. I know. It works really nicely over some really high-waisted skirts. Um, it is the most cropped thing I've ever yeah. worn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was really nervous about that. I yeah. emailed her during the test. I'm like, I'm not sure if this is going to work with, you know, my chest situation. It might be, just be too cropped. And she told me, trust your gauge swatch, which I did. I blocked my swatch. Uh, I noticed that it grew quite a bit. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to trust her. I'm going to follow the instructions to the T and see what happens. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, it's it's really wide. So it's like positive eight or 10 inches ease. It's really cropped, but the back is a little bit longer than the front. And it has a little side split here, which is very flattering. As you can see, the middle section here are is twisted rib straight up and down columns, but the sides here are twisted leaning ribs to the right and to the left. And these are the hardest stitches to do. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It but took a long time. This is so cool. I like, know. The, the way that the stitches, I feel like this, I don't know. If I was you, this would open my brain up to so many ideas for designs because yeah. if you could do this, like even like using just some of this in certain places to create texture where it, like almost it's i think this is a really cool technique that i've never seen before it's, very it's cool. very cool it's very cool and it's reminiscent of cables how they lean and and yeah, cross totally. over each other but there's no cable yeah. needle in sight when you're doing these what i will say it probably exacerbated my wrist to be honest probably, because yeah. i was doing a lot of twisting that i wasn't used sure, to yeah. with my wrist and it did take a while to match the front and the back which is a little bit longer but then i got a break and i got to do some really simple lace which is really nice. She actually had to redo this once. Don't because tell it was them. Going angled, but it looks so much better. Uh, it looked really okay. good the first time, but it didn't. Well, but it here's, wasn't this pattern. Here's, yeah. Okay. 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 So this, <laughs> the center decrease here in the lace, you can do it a number of ways and it will turn out slightly different depending on how you do it. And I read the pattern too fast and I did the center decrease. So it would just go right up the center. So yeah. it made like these columns and that's not what it was supposed to no. do. It was supposed to twist over 
from the right to the left. And that's what creates this really cool like wave yeah. situation. And I caught it a little too late. So I had to redo the front and then I matched the lace on the back and we're fine. Everything's yeah, it looks fine. it great. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and it looks wonderful. I think you did a very good job. And who who was this written by again? Karina Spencer. Karina, that's right. And this is the uh, mid-season sweater. It might be out by the time this video comes out. I know it's gonna be out by early May. Uh, and it comes in different um, shapes and sizes. So you can do this not as a cropped top. Yeah. You can do it as a lot longer. It will take you longer, fair warning, with those yeah. twisted stitches. And the sleeves are optional. So you could do three quarter fitted sleeves or no sleeves and have a cute little tank top situation. That would be really cute, actually. That'd be a cool it's idea. It's super cute. Go yeah. to her Instagram to see all these different versions because she made a bunch. I could see Nicole, our friend Nicole, being super into this. Yeah. Again, this pattern is from Karina Spencer, and you don't have to do the cropped version like I did. The pattern, the mid-season sweater, uh, can be longer. Mm -hmm. It can be with sleeves or without sleeves and be a cute little tank top situation. She made both versions on her Instagram. You can find pictures of those. And it should be coming out by early May, if I haven't said that already. Uh, and the yarn is Skasel's yarn. Uh, it's Sueño Tweed. So the little tweed flecks here are a bunch of different colors, which I really think is cool. So I got yellow and light blue and black and like a, a little purple there, which is great because then I can wear all sorts of colored skirts and pants and things yeah, and, and it's like still going to match. Yeah, just like a note of it in the top. Yeah. Just like a little hint. Um, I really loved using this yarn. Uh, it has a little bit of bamboo in it, I think, a little bit of plant fiber, which makes it um, not as stuffy, warm as 100% wool, which is right up my alley. So, yeah, that's my first FO. First FO. First FO. <laughs> first FO. First FO. My next FO I don't have with me because I gave it as a gift. We were talking about Sophie earlier. My niece Sophie got her baby blanket. It was a cute little beeswax pattern that I took from a cowl pattern and turned into a flat knit blanket. I had to do cables on both sides. Yeah. It took a lot longer than I thought, but I got it to the baby in the first week it was alive. So that's pretty darn great. Yeah, pretty, I, yeah, <laughs> it, it, and it looks really cool. Her uh, her nursery was uh, is Winnie the Pooh themed. Mm -hmm. So hence the honeycomb and mm -hmm. bee, bumblebees. And mm -hmm. she actually got some bumblebee buttons for it. But I forgot to put them on the blanket. But honestly, it's probably for the best because I don't know if you're supposed to put buttons on a baby yeah. blanket or not. I don't really, we don't have babies, so we don't know. Well, we don't know these things. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I don't know if they're on the screen yet already, but we'll show some pictures yeah. of the finished blanket on the side of the crib and her all wrapped up in it maybe, I don't know. She's, it, it's adorable. It's very, cute. it's very cute. I'm really proud of that blanket. I've made a blanket, I think, for all of my nieces so far. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I think they that is true. They all have a blanket. Uh, and this one was probably the hardest yeah. <laughs> of them so far. They're getting harder and harder. Yeah, it was a detailed, very detailed <laughs> blanket, but it was really cool. Yeah. We have so, so much extra yarn for it, too, that we need oh to use. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but we will. We will donate it or use it. Yeah, we'll use it. Or something. We'll, we'll use it. It's around. Yeah. So on a sadder note, um, we lost my grandpa Wister in March. Yeah. He lived a very long life. He was 92. He was surrounded by family and friends when he passed. Uh, his name is Wister. His middle name is Wister. We called him that his whole life. And that's because we believe, I can't verify this, but we believe that um, my great great grandpa or something like that discovered and named the wisteria vine and the flowers. And when I say discovered, I mean, you know, for the Western colonizing world. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> and he named it after himself. Uh, Figures. As they do, yeah. So wisteria and wister are names that are in our family tree for quite a while. Um, he was the only grandpa I ever knew. And I loved him very much. He loved sweaters. Um, so we'll put a picture of him in a sweater with my grandma on the screen. And um, when he passed, we were going through his closet and we found the sweater in the picture. And um, I thought it would be really nice to do a tribute to him, do a little tribute design and recreate that sweater. And so I did a little prototype. This is what I have so far. 
I'll put it down. It's so cool. It's pretty darn cool. It's a little <laughs> scrunched up right now on my needles, but um, this I'll is called choice. Colorwork Knitting and it's Knit in the Round. I had a bunch of Brooklyn Tweed Loft in my stash and they happen to be in these beautiful purple colors, which is what I want to do with this design. I want to use purple and homage to the wisteria plant and the flower, which is a really, really beautiful yeah. purple. Also your favorite color. Also my favorite color. Not my grandpa's favorite. His favorite was yellow. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun fact, he also really loved roses and he uh, was a horticulturalist and he uh, started the rose garden in his local church, which when we went to his memorial at that church, that rose garden was was really flourishing. Was, yeah, flourishing is is one way to say it, it was very much flourishing. Yeah, yeah. And he we, was an amazing man. He was also uh uh he he also well you can tell, say it. tell him about the hip, hypnosis. Or, well, he was a hypnotist. Yeah. <laughs> so first he was a teacher. Yeah. And he taught science, and he loved to take his classes outside and have a more natural sciences feel to all of his science classes, whether he was talking about physics or, I don't know, biology, chemistry, it all has to do with nature in his yeah. opinion. So he would literally bring his students outside. He even built a koi pond at his school and raised koi in that pond. And um, in his memorial, a lot of the students wrote in and said how um, important his class was to them. And just being out in nature so much at that koi pond specifically. Yeah. Um, but after he was a teacher, when he retired from that, he dove headfirst into being a hypnotist. It, yeah. and, and hypnotizing people is a form of therapy. Yeah. Hypnotizing you to quit smoking, to exercise, to lose weight if you wanted, to be more attentive and get better grades. That's something that he did for my brother. And for me, I had night terrors as a kid of sharks and he hypnotized me when I was maybe seven or eight to not have nightmares about sharks. And it worked because I believed in it. Yeah. And it worked until someone of, yeah. until someone made me not believe in it. They said hypnotism isn't real. Yeah, and, and, then, then, and then that, that night, night had a, yeah, I had a course. night terror about sharks. But still, I mean, he was a hypnotist. I mean, how cool is that? That's super <laughs> cool. That's super unique. I, I don't know. He was just, he was a fascinating man. Uh, yeah, very, yeah. very cool. He had so many interests, which is something I have. So many interests. Yeah, um, very passionate man. Yeah, um, my dad helped write the obituary, even though Worcester was my mom's father. Um, my dad loved him also and is a writer and helped write the obituary. And I think he wrote the phrase, Worcester's interests were wide and deep so tons of interests and when he was interested in something he dove in head first and was very passionate about and that is you definitely take after him in that in that regard yeah yeah so the sweater i want to do i want to call it the wisteria sweater i want it to be um a replica of that sweater in the picture and an homage to my grandpa and have these really beautiful purples so this was just a test to see if i could get the color work right I didn't, like down here doesn't quite match the photo, so I'm going to adjust that section. But overall, I'm really happy with how this prototype went. And I partnered up with my friend Ava to see if she could dye up some purples for me. And she had these two purples ready to go for Look me. Look at this purple. I know, It's beautiful. Right? It's so vibrant. I hope it comes through on the camera right. I know. It, it has like... these beautiful little um, speckles in it too. If I don't know if you can tell. They're like... Uh, magenta speckles in there and some black too. Anyway, she's going to be dyeing up two custom colorways for this project. Uh, and they're all going to be in the purple family. And um, her yarn is called Seismic Yarn and I'm using her butter weight and her sock weight. Yeah. Uh, butter sock and butter fingering, I think. So let's see what the colorways are because I want to get these right. So this is Iolite, this really vibrant purple. Iolite. Iolite. Mean? And this one, I'm pretty sure is, yeah, Lavender Pearl. Yeah, um, that's so Lavender this, Pearl, right? This will probably be the, the MC, the main color, mm -hmm. because it's it's mostly gray, but it has this really light um, lavender purple it's going like through accent, it. It's accent, though. Yeah, yeah and it, it'll tie in nicely with the two colors that are missing in this palette. So that's something to look forward to probably coming out this fall because she still needs time to dye the yarn. I don't want to rush her. Yeah. And I need time to finish designing it. So I look forward to that pattern this fall. Okay, so normally we talk about stash acquisition when I buy a bunch of yarn. 
And this is kind of stash acquisition, but I didn't really buy the yarn. I uh, dyed yarn for the first time. <laughs> I've never done it before. When we were at Stitches West, I was at the booth and my friend Ksenia came up with her friend Lynn and Lynn introduced herself to me and we started talking. She said she was taking a yarn dyeing class at Stitches West. That's something we failed to mention. There's a bunch of classes. Oh yeah. We're, I, hopefully I'm going to be doing a class next Stitches, but I haven't heard back about it yet. So who knows? We'll see. Uh, so she was taking a class on yarn dyeing and I said, wow, I would love to do that. I've never dyed yarn before. And she said, well, I live in San Mateo. How about you come down and we dye yarn together at my house? And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so I went over to her house um, sometime in March. Or yeah. was it February? Maybe it, it was March. It, it might have even been early April. Oh, wow. I don't know what time it is anymore. Uh, and she showed me some of the yarn bases that she had. So first she showed me a sock base and I picked out some colors and I dyed this bright yellow skein of sock weight yarn. It's like a sun. And I'm gonna unravel it. So I tried to do some speckles and I failed. <laughs> I mean, I, you didn't really fail, well, they're speckled. Yeah, they're speckled, but they're, they didn't come out how I wanted them. I made them a little too splotchy, but there's these red speckles in there. There's also gold speckles that you can't really tell. That looks like a like a, a mango or, or like, a, Ooh, like a peach or something. I like the mango. I like that comment a With lot. With the red? I also put, where is it? Mm, I love mango. There's some black speckles too that got kind of like bunched up in there. I wish were more spread out. I well, just wish you know, it was when overall. you use it, it'll spread out a little bit. Yeah, when I knit it, it'll definitely, yeah, for yeah. sure. And that's what Lynn said too, to not fret about it. But for a first time dying, not bad at all. It's not bad. I'm really no. happy with the yellow. So vibrant. I love it. Yeah, I wish I could remember what the dye what the thing was. what the dye color was. Mm -hmm. She sent me that info, but I forgot. Um, this sock weight yarn is um, eighty percent superwash merino and ten percent cashmere. I love seeing her do and that. And ten percent nylon. Um, and I'm I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for yet. It's just sitting in my stash, looking pretty for now. So, use it for something. Yeah, this wasn't everything that I dyed though. I also I dyed that. three skeins of this linen silk blend. And I, this, this I can see you using way sooner than, yeah. the, than the bright yellow. Yeah, so I'm gonna open one up so you can see the variation. We didn't know how this was gonna dye up. She had never used this base before. She had just purchased it, I think. She hadn't dyed with it yet anyway. Perfect, you know what? These are both perfect April colors, by the way. I know, yeah. they're like Easter. Yeah, Look at that. they're beautiful. They're so cute. Um, so let's see, what is this blend again? It's fingering weight, 50% alpaca, 25% silk, and 25% linen. And it's a, a fingering weight, but I might, um, use a larger needle to make it even more drapey. Right, yeah. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'll make a pink waist vest out of this, which is one of my designs. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, from two years ago, maybe mm -hmm. last year. Uh, yeah, because I have enough yardage for that and Definitely. it's the right weight for it i think um so yeah i'm i'm super pleased with the pink yeah i think that turned out really great and i definitely want to dye yarn again but something that i learned about myself in this process is um we used acid dye yarns or mm -hmm. acid dyes for these yarns and acid dyes aren't good for the environment right. they're also really dangerous to work with yeah and you have to use a lot of water and stuff too don't you in every dye process, you use quite a bit of water. There right. are ways to mitigate it, but that takes a lot of experience that Lynn and I just didn't have. Yeah. Um, you probably had to wear like big masks and stuff. I had to wear a mask and goggles when I was dealing with the powder form of these acid dyes. And it it just made it really obvious to me how unhealthy they are. And to see them, you know, be disposed on the drain wasn't great either. Right, of course, yeah. Um, And that it's not you know, Lynn's fault or anything. It's it's the nature of acid dyes. And we talked to Kelly in one of our episodes, uh, the owner of the Royal Bee Yarn Company, and she uses exclusively natural dyes. Mm -hmm. And I really want to learn from her to how do, she try, does that. Yeah, try it again with natural dyes. And, yeah. I, and I've told her that, and she knows, and we're working yeah, on it. Yeah, she uses like beetles and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, avocado pits and yeah. peels and all of these things. Super and it, cool. it takes a lot more time. And that's it, it yeah. takes a lot more effort. It does use quite a bit of water still, but I feel like I, I have less guilt doing that. I, sort yeah, of I get that. I get that. I think that's just kind of part of the, our new, you know, landscape of climate change and stuff. We need to be more wary about how we do things. 
Yeah. Um, I think you did an amazing job, but Thank you. Uh, I'm super curious to see how how it goes when you use natural dyes too. Maybe you can try to do another one in pink with natural dyes right? and see what the difference is and stuff. Avocado cool. doesn't come out green, it comes out pink. What? I know. That's really That's what I've been told. I could be wrong, but that's what I've been told. I wonder why that is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Chemical, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, how it interacts with the water and such. And it also depends on how you process things, I'm sure. Um, are you using, like, uh, a... <laughs> I'm almost done. He's trying to rush me. Did you see him? Did you Can see you see this? me do this? Did you see this? He's trying to rush me. Well, I'm just worried about the time of the... <sighs> uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start from. I'm sorry. I want to learn how to dye with natural dyes. Um, I don't know if I'll use acid dyes again. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Also, every milligram matters. Yeah, in acid it's dyes, really, it, is yeah, it's really, fun. yeah. You yeah. got to be very careful about how much of certain oh, things you put in. Yeah. yeah, I put barely any of the pink in at first, and it wasn't really soaking into the linen of and the silk of this mix, and so Lynn was like, just put just a, like 0.05 in there and I did and that's what made these darker sections and I'm so glad we did that because that makes it more interesting when I knit with it I don't want it to be super solid I really love how it came out I'm very proud of myself I'm proud of you too did you feel like you were cooking drugs or something no I felt like I was brewing beer oh interesting yeah it, was, it reminded me a lot of when we brewed beer at yeah. Tim's house ages ago very cool yeah I want to try it very badly I want to try it with the natural dyes but I, I want to try doing it with cotton I'm sure yeah. it's, it's got to be easier with cotton right i feel like it's harder because cotton won't soak up the dyes as much if natural dyes versus mm. acid dyes acid dyes would penetrate better yeah Hi, buddy that'd be an interesting that's an interesting we'll see we'll see what happens we shall see that's my knitter's nook jimbo came jimbo came to say hi and to uh move us over to the uh the corner yeah jimbo do you want to go to the crochet corner Let's go to crochet corner, buddy. Fuzzy belly. The fuzzy belly. You're, you're just a cloud of a dude. Cool, cool. Well, welcome to the crochet corner, my little segment of this podcast, where I show you all the things that I've been making. And we're in a little corner. We're actually in the corner. And a little nook. Oh my gosh, it's both. I didn't even think about this. Well, this part right here is the corner, and then uh -huh. right here is the nook. Oh, you can tell because I thought this was the corner and this is the nook. Oh, that's crochet I can see how you can. I can see how you can mistake that. Yeah. Oh, I'm mistaken. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, show me around your corner. I'll show. <laughs> I'll show you. Come on, right, right around here. Cool. Yep. There you go. Uh, first off, let's start with my newest designs. And there's actually, I mean, there's been a pretty good amount of designs between the last episode and this episode. Uh, but I'm going to focus on just two of my designs in specific. The first one is one that I've shown off before, but it's finally finished. And I, I, I did so good, guys. It's such a good pattern. It is the Bonimals. The Bonimals. I'm so proud of these patterns. The Frog. Here's the Frog. Oh, wait, yeah, I'll show you on the, on this guy right here wait I he's upside down upside there down go. there you go <laughs> so these are my new little amigurumi uh miniature patterns they're very easy to make um no so to low so in fact this no frog so pattern, to low so no so to low so this <sighs> this frog pattern actually i uh just came out with a tutorial for it it's a free tutorial that just came out and i made it all not only with no sewing but with not even using a needle at all the whole thing without even making it with a darning needle, uh, which I'm really, really proud of. It's very cool. Um, but they're really cool. They got little magnets in the butts and the and the heads so that you can stack them on top of each other. Um, and the new ebook that I just came out with teaches you how to make, uh, it teaches you four specific creatures and over 12 unique features to make a variety of different creatures. Wow. I know. Uh, there's one, there's like pugs and there's specific you patterns. Mean pugs? There's pugs. Oh, that's right. All of the different creatures have an AW instead of one of the vowels. So there's, there's, uh, these are pigs, but I call them hogs. Oh, like hog. Yeah, Got hogs. It. Not a pig lout? I, it was a pig lout for a while, but then someone, a Cooper, by the way, hi Cooper, hi, if you're Cooper. watching. Uh, gave me the suggestion of calling them Haugs, and I was like, that's genius. Yes, that we're going to call smart. them Haugs. Good job. Um, so there's Haugs, there's Bounties. Bounties. 
<laughs> there's little frogs. Um, soon I'm going to come out with a tutorial for a an elephant or an owl fount. No, because that sounds like an owl. Yeah, that's true. An elephant. An elephant. It sounds like we're in Lord of the Rings. Yep. Ele elephant. An, an elephant. An elephant. <laughs> uh, there's a little, I made a little beaver. Um, but yeah, it's the it's a very versatile ebook. It teaches you a bunch of different little Where's features. Where's the count? The count is, let's see. Did you make a count? There is a count in here somewhere. You made a count? Um, I'm going to skip over my next latest design for just a second to show you uh, my latest finished yeah, object. Yeah, please show that off right Because now. it's right here and it's like, why not? Get it in um, camera. The last... In one of the last live streams, I made this. See, I have so many of these little bonimals that I didn't have anywhere to put them. Yeah, except the floor. Except for the floor, apparently. Uh, so I needed to make a new creature to uh, hold the bonimals. So I made this, and the live stream came up with an amazing name. They call it the Maunimal because it's a mom. <gasps> I didn't know that. Yeah. And it's, you can see he's got a little mouth there. Oh, um, he's got little eyes. And my favorite part about it is that he's got uh, little hands on the ends of his uh, strings here so that he can, he can actually, and there's magnets in the hands so that he can actually grab, well, oops, that was the wrong polarity. There we go. <laughs> so he can actually hold on to bonimals and put and them. eat them. Yeah, and put them into his mouth. With his little teeth. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then you can pull the, Sorry, you can pull the arms Go ahead. and it closes up the mouth. I'm super proud of this. Uh, I will come out with a pattern for this very soon. Uh, but honestly, the pattern's pretty simple and there's already one on Go the ahead, website. Go ahead, reach in. Go um, ahead. Yeah, I'll just reach in. Ah! Oh, wow, that really, it's got a grip to it. Um, the, the pattern is, uh, I used um, Sir Pearl Gray's uh, bell bag pattern, which is already on the website as the base. I did some fancy footwork in the mouth. If you watch the rewatch the live stream, you wait, actually you crochet will. with your feet? Uh, yeah. You, how do you knit? With my tailbone. <laughs> That's right. I remember now. Uh, <laughs> um, if, if you watch the live stream, you actually might be able to reverse engineer the pattern and figure out how I did the mouth and stuff because I went into detail about what I was doing for that. Um, but I will come out with a tutorial for it sooner or later. Comment down below if this is something that you're super interested in um, because I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to be it's interested It's super in. cool. It is pretty cool. I, what I like about it is it can either go this way. Yeah, and be like and have happy like, or it's like, little, ah! It's little arms down here. Mm -hmm. Or it could go this way yeah. and mm -hmm. have like weird little dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really proud of it. Uh, I just like, I thought about it right before the live stream and I was like, you know what? I need a new bag for these. Let's just do it on the live stream, see what see what happens. And I'm so glad that happened. First off, they chose all the colors for it. Uh, and they're perfect. And they're the perfect colors. Uh, we actually got really lucky because I all, I would have ran out of this fuzzy yarn if they didn't chose this blue one because I, I had an extra ball of this, but I didn't uh, of the other colors. So uh, we were oh, really lucky. wait, it has a butt. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's also got a butt. <laughs> it's also got a butt crack. <laughs> I, I couldn't help it. I had to give it a butt crack. Oh my god. Um, I love this thing. I'm definitely gonna make more monomals for sure because they're just so much fun. Great. And so many so my house will be full of Which is gonna be great because then I'm gonna have to make more bonimals to fill up the monomals. <laughs> okay. Yes, make thousands instead of hundreds. I love it though. <laughs> but I love it though. It's very cute. Anyhow, that is my uh latest finish uh, finish object. Uh, and my latest uh, designs. Go check out the Bonimals. I'm really proud of the patterns and the videos and all that stuff. There's going to be more Bonimals coming out soon, by the way. I'm going to do specific patterns for other creatures. And if you have any ideas for other Bonimals that you'd like me to make, either join the live streams. Let me know then because I am I usually I like to make new ones live on the videos. There's a Falx. There's a Falx. Uh, and... Yeah, if, if you uh, have any ideas for other ones you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments. I love his little face. I know. The bunnies, I think, is one of the best like designs. It's, it's really cool. So back to your uh, designs. Back to my designs, yes. The other latest design that I have worked on was kind of like a last second, you know what, let's do this as a latest design. I wanted to raise money uh, to help support Ukraine. 
So uh, Ukraine's national flower is the sunflower. So you know, I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's see if I can come up with the sunflower pattern really quick. And, and see right Jimbo here. Decided and Jimbo decides to join. To do his host duties. Thank you, buddy. You're so sweet. Oh, yes. Get, yeah. Make sure the tail's right in front of the camera. There we perfect. go. You're yeah, beautiful. Perfect. You're um, beautiful. So I came out. I, I made a sunflower. And I am so proud of this sunflower pattern. Okay, I'm going to show the... the camera since Jimbo so perfectly first it's it. it's one of my first try patterns like I made it and it was I'm so so proud of this pattern it's made with no sewing except for the leaf the leaf is sewn on but it's very very easy There's to sew on um, but the flower itself and the stem and all the petals and everything there is all made in one piece just in a spiral uh, it's really neat I think it is a very unique pattern uh, very cool and was a great way to help support um, Ukraine in their time of need. So if you would like to check out this sunflower pattern, go check it out in the library. I'm really proud of it. Um, I do need to make more of a video tutorial for the pattern because I kind of just did the pattern on the live stream and like explained it on the live stream, but there is a PDF and a written instructions. It's not too complicated, um, but if you do need extra help, obviously let me know. I'd be happy to help, uh, but I'm really proud of it. This isn't the only sunflower you made. That's right, uh, because there's another latest fo that i've done that was just for fun uh just like a personal project um which i've actually never shown this is gonna be cool oh by the way the sunflower is pretty cool because it's on wire so you can bend it around yeah the things. stem is a really thick wire that yeah. you can move around like the dragon pattern and the wings exactly my other latest finished object is another sunflower but <laughs> but better <laughs> i couldn't help it i just had to make some weird creature using look, the sunflower look at this Dude. He's so cute, right? He's just the cutest little thing. I know. He's so cute. Oh my my gosh. idea was I wanted to have a sunflower poking out up here from behind stuff. But if you were to like investigate it more, you'd see that it was an actual like little creature that had a sunflower on the top. It's so I just thought it was cute. kind of fun. And, and honestly, I just love the pattern, making the pattern of the sunflower so much that and I just the, wanted to do it again. The leaves are so cool. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. Um, the only thing that I really want to add to it is I really would like to add a little ladybug on one of the on one of the leaves here. That's it. Though. I told him he could use one of the bumblebee buttons that I didn't use for my niece's I think blanket. I think it's a good idea. Go right there. Yeah, I think it's not a bad idea. My only hesitation with the bumblebee is that I wanted to do a ladybug because it would stand, it would like pop, whereas a bumblebee would just add to the yellow. Um, but I don't know. I'm still like thinking about it. Uh, there's some stuff about this pattern that wasn't great. Like I put, I think it's got like at least a dollar's worth of dimes and pennies and nickels in, in the butt to he's make a, it He's heavy. a heavy butt boy. Yeah, he's heavy. <laughs> he's pretty heavy. But I needed to because he needs to sit, sit yeah. up. Yeah, you know? and then he did this leaf thing to counterbalance. Yeah, to kind of give it a little kickstand. And it totally works. Yeah, and absolutely. He's been sitting on top of our shelf ever since uh, we made it. Yeah. And I love him. Did we name him? Uh... No, you know, we haven't named them. Actually, let us know. Can, yeah, give yeah. us suggestions. Name suggestions in the comments, please. Uh, extra credit points if you come up with a great Ukrainian name suggestion. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I love that. Um, yeah, but I'm really proud of this little sunflower dude. I think he is they. I should say they because I don't yeah. think plants have a gender. So... They are so cute, and uh, yeah, I'm just really proud of it. Look at the eyebrows. Oh my god, <laughs> I identify with those blonde eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with what eyebrows? Hey, <laughs> boo. This is mine now. You can't have it. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, so those were my latest designs and uh, latest like personal projects and finished objects and stuff like that. Um, but I do have a couple of upcoming designs as well. So next up are my upcoming designs and uh, I have been working on a lot. Oh my God, look at this cat. I know. Um, I have been working on a lot of upcoming designs because this Friday, the Friday after this episode comes out, is going to be Earth Day, yay! which is a day to celebrate the Earth, try to take care of it a little bit, maybe try to raise money for um, different types of organizations to help protect the Earth and the life on our Earth. So uh, the past 
three years we've been doing a Crochet for Earth Day fundraiser where we try to raise money for climate change or for uh, endangered species that are having a hard time because humans are screwing up everything. And so this, or this Earth Day, we're really kicking it up a notch. Um, oh, like Emerald. Yeah, we're kicking it up a stitch. Uh, there are Boo. five different designs for different uh, different endangered amigurumi patterns from five different artists, me being one Ooh. of them. Uh, the different artists are, if you know them, they're Drooby Zoo, um, Ohana Crafts, Lemon Yard Creations, Sir Pearl Gray, and me, Club Louis Crochet. Loops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've done this before, but with different groups. Yeah. Like different designers each year. Yeah. A few of the artists we have worked with before, but we do have a few newcomers too. So that's pretty cool. And there's five this year. Last five. year there were three. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot because I'm basically doing five patterns in two weeks. And I mean, like, obviously they wrote four of those patterns, but we're still, I'm recording different uh, video tutorials for each one. We're doing PDFs for all of them. Obviously there's, there's a lot of editing that goes into it. We got to test them all out. It's been a long week. Uh, and we have a whole nether long week next week. So I'm kind of stressed. You can do it. But it's pretty cool. And I'd like to show you some of them. I don't have them all made just yet. I don't even have like a, a prototype of two of them made. But I do have three of them to show uh, a little early draft of. But the other two you're going to have to wait Hopefully a Jimbo doesn't eat these endangered species. Yes. Yes. There's only three left, buddy. Uh, so the first one I'd like to show is uh, so creative. This is a dugong from uh, from Drooby Zoo. Uh, Drooby Zoo really out like shot it out of the park this time. This pattern is so cool. Look, you see Jimbo just nomming on me in the corner. Um, <laughs> stop. Uh, it is so cute and such a unique pattern. Um, it, he uses like half double crochets and slip stitches to do some really crazy shaping. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the indents of the head. Yes, that was a huge part of the pattern was that he wanted so it cool. to indent because that's how um, dugongs actually, their eyes kind of indent a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if you don't know what a dugong is, uh, and it's, it's not a Pokemon, there is a Pokemon called dugong, but <laughs> dugong is, it's essentially a, <laughs> a, a very, very close relative of the manatee. They're very similar. Um, uh, sea cow is another name for them and this pattern is so cool I'm really really excited to show you it seriously every single artist brought a completely different idea to the table and I am I'm beyond the moon excited to show you guys all these patterns they're so cool so but this is one of five that's one of five and I think you're really gonna like this one a lot I Our think this one's gonna be the first one that's coming out but are all of them available in one ebook together? So yes, they will be available in one ebook. All the proceeds for all the patterns, the digital patterns of getting the ebooks and everything like that, go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's a way for us to make a fundraiser. You're you're going to be able to either choose to purchase one pattern specifically or the entire bundle, or just donate if you'd like to for any amount of money. So it's it's really a big fundraiser. We're really trying to raise money for the World Wildlife So Fund. what's next in the bundle? The next one in the bundle is another artist we have worked with before. By the way, we worked with Juby Zoo before in uh, for the strawberry pattern, if you might Don't give it one. away. Before. Sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. waving it around waving before around. the great reveal. The next one is uh, by Lemon Yarn Creations, a.k.a. Andrea. She made a black-footed ferret, and it's what? like actual size. Isn't really? That are cool? they? Wait, are they this small? I'm. I gotta do more research on that, but I I'm think pretty sure. are a little bit bigger than this. I'm pretty sure it's close to it. A baby ferret. A little baby black-footed ferret. It's so cute, and this pattern is super unique in its own way too. That's what I love about all these. They all have like such unique uh, the parts to it. The really unique part about this pattern is it has no sewing. Very cool. Isn't that crazy? Look at it. It looks like it's totally sewn together, but she did this really unique way to add the legs and attach them and make the ears and stuff and the tail where you don't actually need to sew anything together. It is so unique. Um, you might recognize her work uh, in last year's Earth Day uh, collaboration. She did the uh, red panda pattern. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. can kind of see some of the same styling to it. Yeah. Uh, 
but she really kicked it up. Like, oh yeah. my gosh, it's it's a very unique pattern. I I really like the. You know, the ears remind me of bear ears too. They are kind of like you little bear ears. You could do like ears, a yeah. little. A little, with some changes, you could do a bear pattern if you think you like. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that is that is another one of our designs. All right. We got two. Two. You have one more? Um, yeah, I've got one more to show. The other two, you're going to have to wait for. Be uh, be prepared. Be prepared. Um, uh, but the next one is actually my design in the, in the group of them. And you know I had to do, you know I had to bring a burb into this world. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I had to bring a burb. My creature for the Earth Day collaboration is this little snowy plover. Uh, if you don't know what snowy plovers are, you might recognize it from the Pixar short Piper. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, I think, I believe a type of plover. Yeah, they are a type of plover. Um, snowy plovers are... Uh, an endangered species that are actually right outside our door here in San Francisco. At Ocean Beach. Off the it's, Ocean Beach. It's one of their um, mating grounds. It's one of mm -hmm. where they sometimes nest. Um, there are other places in the Bay Area that they're known to nest. And unfortunately, they pick beaches that are very well trodden. Yeah, because they're really awesome beaches. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. when you see a snowy plover on our beach, um, you're asked to keep your dog away from them. Yeah. Keep your distance. And... It's really worked over the past four years that yeah. I've lived here. They've, I've noticed yeah. they their populations have gone up. Yes, actively. And they're so cute. They are seriously crazy cute. They go in like these big bundles of them and they run across the beach and they're like... Dilly, 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 with their little legs. Oh, they're so cute. I, I also designed a shawl. Um, oh yeah, the snowy plover shawl. The snowy plover shawl because the yarn I used reminded me of the snowy plover shawl. Yeah. We really like snowy plovers. We do. Uh, There's also a coffee shop nearby that named their signature drink the snowy plover. Yeah. It's it's one of those animals that has become an unofficial mascot of our area. Yeah, absolutely. The sunset of San Francisco. That's mm -hmm. our that's our neighborhood. Outer sunset. Yeah. Um, but mine is a snowy plover. Uh, it is, of course, it is a burb. Because I couldn't help myself. I will in include instructions on how to not make it a burb if you don't want it to be a burb. At this rate, I just assume all birds I see are burbs. Yeah. I mean, it, even the wild ones. It's yeah. better safe than sorry. It is. It's always it's always safe to assume it's a burb. Because birds aren't real. Um, <laughs> I did add some fancy, unique uh, techniques in this pattern for things like the feet are made with like wire bent around. They're very, I mean, I don't know how much. Yeah, you can see them in the video. They're very feety. They're very feety. I'm very excited to share uh, how I did that. Um, and then there's all, obviously there's a lot of color changes going on to he add the details. He kind of matches Jimbo. He does kind of match Hello. Jimbo. Hello. He's got Jimbo fur all Hello. over him. Oh, nope. Don't eat him. Jimbo, don't. He's endangered. They're endangered. Gosh. You've got to be careful, bud. Gosh. He's just eating. Yeah, eat me. That's I, fine. I love how he just fits in the palm of my hand. I know. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This one's my favorite. <laughs> no offense to the other designers. I, I am very proud of this this design. <laughs> uh, and I haven't seen the other two either. These are the only three I've seen. Yeah, the other two are super cool. Um, one of them is <laughs> one of them. The one by Sir Pearl Gray, which I again I'm not going to spoil anything because you just wait and see it. It's like whoa, <laughs> oh my honestly, gosh, pattern. It's honestly, a cool one. how can you choose just one? Like I would yeah. get the ebook in a heartbeat because all of them. Yeah, Even and it's for an amazing store. cause. Like, you know, care about care about our our wildlife and in the mm -hmm. species that we're murdering. <sighs> you know, like let's take care of our take care of the life on our planet. Yeah. Um, if you would like to sign up for a pro membership this month, a portion of your of your membership will go to the World Wildlife Fund, and at the end of this month, you're going to be able to choose between uh one of these five kits. Um, so each of these patterns will have a different kit available for sale so in the shop. So this month being April, not May. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, by the end of April. If you sign up before the end of the month, part of your proceeds go to the World Wildlife Fund. You'll get a, a kit mailed to your door with all the materials to make whatever uh, whatever one of the animals you choose. And uh, you'll get access to all of the, the patterns as well. So it's a really good, like, good time to sign up if you haven't if you haven't signed up for a pro membership yet. Is there going to be a kit for the entire ebook? Huh, I actually didn't think about that. Yeah, I think we could probably manage that. Um, He'll work on it. We'll yeah, see. that's a good idea. The kits will be for sale in the shop. And uh, if you purchase any of the kits, they will also, a portion of your proceeds will go to the World Wildlife oh Fund as well. 
Because um, you're both falling asleep on Louis' hand. Yeah, it's really cute. I can't move my hand anymore. No, no um, you cannot. <laughs> he's like fully out on it. Uh, and the the proceeds for those kits and the uh, the patterns and everything will be ongoing. So if you see this like a year from now and you're like, oh man, I missed out. You didn't miss out. Go purchase these patterns. Go purchase that ebook and those kits and those proceeds will still go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's, an, it's a forever... Uh, uh, fundraiser. What about the sunflower? Is that a forever fundraiser too? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, until I guess until until the. I mean, even after the war is over, Ukraine's going to need a lot yeah, of support. Yeah. 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 I I think it's best to make fundraisers just continuous. It's just yeah. It's just a safer way to do it. Good mm-hmm. idea. Um. Okay. So those are our upcoming designs. Again, you're gonna have to wait for those last two. Uh. But we have a lot of patterns coming out over this next month. Like crazy amount uh the last thing that there's i wanted to more? share there's only one last thing it's very it's a very quick last thing and he says the knitter's nook is longer than the crochet corner uh, we're looking at those time stamps <laughs> the last thing is uh just a quick uh shout out uh we um we hired some new people yes uh we club hired crochet did. club crochet hired a couple of new web design interns um, we were only planning on hiring one web design intern, but I I had a hard time only hiring one, so I decided to hire two. Hiring's hard. Hiring's really hard. Uh, thank you to everybody that applied for the internship. Uh, there were a pretty decent amount of resumes and uh, and interviews that went on. Uh, if you were one of them, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Uh, it really means a lot. It was a very very difficult decision to make. Um, but yeah, I really just want you to know, I appreciate everybody that, that applied. Uh, and hopefully you're going to see some new cool stuff going on on the website. Uh, at least that's the plan. <laughs> it's kind of funny me like sh- facing this way because I need to have my hand for Jimbo's mm-hmm. pillow. You have Jimbo fur all over you in your beard. That's just my life. Yes. Did you know that everything we crochet and knit has Jimbo fur in it? Yeah. Yeah, if you ever get a crocheted object from me from now until probably forever, it will have Jimbo fur on it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be that's like 90 how, years old and be that's like, how he's oh. going to live forever. He's little, we call him Jimbo spores, actually. He does. I do, yeah. He's little, he's got Jimbo spores everywhere. Uh, yeah, so there is my crochet corner. Thank you so much for watching our 14th episode 14. of the Lupin Pro podcast. If you would uh, like to comment below on anything we talked about today, please do. We read all of the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Please enjoy Jimbo and his cuteness. (laughs) Check out clubcrochet.com. Check out Juliana Lustenauder Designs on Ravelry, Lovecrafts, and Payhip. We have an Instagram. If you haven't followed our Instagram, go check out the Loop and Pearl Instagram. And obviously, we each have individual Instagrams as well. Mm -hmm. And we uh, P-shape you. We P-shape you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, You know, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. All right. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. Happy knitting. And uh, we'll see you next month. (laughs) Oh, that was good. (laughs) I don't want to throw beads everywhere, so. Oh, okay. That's how I rounded things out. I could not have gone better. Oh, my God. They're everywhere. They're in your yarn. They're everywhere. That is so funny. Oh Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Please tell me that was recording. Oh yeah, of course it was recording. Have you looked? It's still recording. (laughs) Oh, that's so So funny. Good. So good. How did that happen? I just.